or I need to. But then again, that's all part of the cosmic game. Um, so that for me was a huge piece in realizing that this is a huge game on a much bigger level and I've come down this ladder and I'm down here and I'm experiencing this thing. And when you, when you really start to understand that and you get that, it does change the, uh, how you process life. I mean, you're still going to have your, your madness. This week, I, pff, I had a whole lot of dances with the Matrix this week, boy. <laughs> it was definitely testing this week. But it, because I know, I'm still able to go, okay, let me step back and let me view this. But when you don't know, you buy it hook, line, and sinker, and you're in it, and you are stuck in it, and you're just in it over and over and over. Um, now, so I said you're involved in a cosmic game, okay? That who am I? What am I made of? Am I outside of myself? Or do I exist only in my mind? Does anybody exist? Or am I looking at myself every time I look at you? Is anything even there? That's a divine comedy. So ultimately, you will eventually rediscover yourself and move on to create another experience, other worlds which you will form from your imagination as we have collectively done on this one. And those are really trippy questions to ask when you say, you know, because I've done that. It's like, is anything even out there? I mean, I, I mean, I'm looking at you, but, but is that me? And even though we go, yeah, we're all one, we say all this stuff, but we really don't get what we're saying half the time. Uh, it just sounds really good. But that is such a trippy one as to really how we are existing in this dance, because when I'm not observing anything, is it even there? Not really because nothing can exist unless you observe it. You have to give it your attention for it, for, for matter to actually take, you know, solid form. Somebody has to be observing it into existence. And, and, and that observation, a lot of times, while you'll see it, obviously, is based on, you know, the programmed um, uh, items, those things that are programmed into your brain, into your reality of what is acceptable to be seen in your world. So that's why there's many things that are going on right here in this space that we do not see because it is not part of our program, our brain's program. So what we're doing is we're having to release that. We're having to change our perception. We're having to really let go and allow ourselves to really realize that there is more and not put it in a package, in a box. Very easy to do, even though we might say, oh, we're so expensive, we let go. No, you still have restrictions there. So you have a package of what reality can be. You have a box of what, how far you will allow reality to, uh, to exist for you. So that is the biggest thing right there, is changing your perception, Ch being able to change your perception, understand how your brain works, and how you can actually recreate a whole different reality um, based on what, you know, your, the con how your brain uh, operates. Because, you're, you know, you see, you don't see with your eyes, you see with your brain. And I think for me that was one of the biggest <coughs> things is knowing that it's not the eyes. My eyes act as a lens, but my brain is what is actually seeing and picking up these light frequencies. And because of that, your brain is what structuring reality for you based on what your perception based on what you can accept as a possibility based on what we collectively can accept now there's some base things that we all collectively have agreed on in terms of what reality will be and then we can individually step it up in terms of what we can see as a more expansive reality we can create a whole different construct of what reality is that you might not see and she might not see, but I have expanded myself so much that I can see a whole lot more than you can see. And that's what I'm talking about. That's where we have to get to. So it's not about you 
focusing so much on what you see with your eyes, which is this governmental dance going on now, this, this whole process going on now, don't bind to it with, with your eyes because that you are being used so, to solidify what they want. This is what is so amazing about, like, again, these script writers. <laughs> They use you. They're, they've studied you so much. They've studied all of us so much that they know how to do it. So that's the reason why right now when you turn on the news you, you are, or you get on the Internet, what are they talking about? How bad the economy is. It's severe. Let me, let me uh, I, I, I've made some notes here <laughs> in terms of what they say. Okay, let's view the current programming being directed to the minds of the American people at this time. Not just the American people, but we're going to start with that because that's where we are. Okay, the demise of the economy. It's bad. It's really bad. Be afraid. You may wind up, you may wind up with nothing. You are powerless. Hold on to what you have because it might get worse. What will you do? You may lose everything. But here's the best part. Then they come in with, don't, but don't worry. We are doing everything to fix it for you. But first, we have to move your mind into desperation. We have to keep you looking outside of yourself. It's the only way. It's the only way that we can keep control, and that is by distracting you. That's what's going on. That's what's, I mean, I don't watch the news, but the times when I do hear it, I'm like, good Lord. It's like, you know, it, it, besides the, you know, 12 shot dead today, as my son always says, Mom, one of these days we're going to get up, you know, they're probably going to say everyone dead, news at 11. <laughs> <laughs> but that is, and people are just really terrified. Well, let me tell you. Yeah, as it looks physically, because they're working this, they have to, they have to structure that this is all part of moving you into what I call the renovated matrix, okay? They've got nice, they've painted it up and all that stuff, fixed it up, and they're going to, they're, they're ushering you into that one. So you, again, you have two doors now. Obama represents two doors. He does represent change. <laughs> he <laughs> He represents change, as I always say, could represent, yes, change jingling in your pocket, too. But he represents change on a very powerful level. And you have a choice right now, and it's a very powerful time for you to decide whether you want to go into the renovated matrix, which you're still going to keep going the same way. It's going to feel good. It's going to feel, you know, but... You're going to be limited, and you're just going to still be on that wheel, and they will have packaged something for you. Or you can cho choose this other door over there, which is, you know what? I think I really want to start being in charge of me on a deep level, which means I am not buying into this at all because money, again, is a current that's why they use that. You talk about charge cards. You, you, you listen to all this stuff. The powers that be, they, you know, they, they're regulating the money. They just keep powering it up. They decide what the value is going to be. And that, to me, is one of the trippiest things because I bought it because what? You come into this life and your parents program you and you, know, you go out there and, and the rest of the world programs you and you go into the corporate world and you know, school, all of that, and you're programmed. So here we are, we accept whatever value they put. Now remember, it has nothing to do with whether it's uh, paper money, because you know, we know they're Federal Reserve notes and that's all they are. They really have no value to them, it's just paper, monopoly money. But they still say, okay, well, you have so many of these, you can do this stuff. Even when they were using, you know, rice or salt or whatever, that was still money. But there's always some sort of value to it. And, and who would control that? Like Rome? Like, like all these other civilizations, the crazy people at the top would decide who was going to be poor, what kind of lifestyle you would have, how you would exist.